Okay, hello everyone, Victor Mama from Excel Moments with a continuation of the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And like I've said in previous videos, if you're not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula game. Today we have Excel challenge 399. So let's try and make sense of the problem. What I see is that first of all, for the input, we have just these strings and then when an operation is performed on them, we have these outputs. So how do we get from A to B? So let's read here. It says extract the unique alphabets from the given strings and count their frequencies of occurrence. It should appear in the format alphabet count, alphabet count. The results should be sorted on alphabets. Okay. So it means that you look at this string, for example, kind of say what are the unique alphabets I have in here this one has just two C and V although V comes first in the order in which it appears in the string but because this needs to be sorted alphabetically we take C first then we count how many C's do we have in there one two three four five six so that's six so you have C a colon and a count six then you have a comma space you know and we go to the next alphabet which is V right and then we have a colon and we have its own counts it's really like you know a counter dictionary so you have alphabet counts comma space alphabet counts and so on and so forth so there are two approaches i'm going to show in this video not because there are only two ways to solve it there are always multiple ways to solve problems in excel but i want to show you one that looks a little maybe generic in some sense and then i show you a second one that uses a function that a lot of people would not have or maybe may not have it's the right way to put it but if you do it would make the problem you know very easy to solve so at this point i would say if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do subscribe to the channel and you can also hit the like button if you really enjoy the content that i'm posting here okay let's get back to excel all right so what you do first of all and most problems like this start up the same way is you take the string and you kind of break it apart you know into all the characters you know have them spill into different cells typically we use a mid you know and a sequence construct for that so i'm going to do mid i select the cell and then i cry try to create a sequence of one all the way to the length of the string so i do a sequence and i say length of that string right and then one say one character okay so basically these are all the characters but now we have them speed into multiple cells so this is everything the next thing is we really want to know even though i'm seeing here these are a lot of characters how many unique alphabets do i have in there so i use the unique function so i can do unique right of this okay so it gives me v and c that's all so even though there are so many but it's just v and c and then i sort it okay right and i have c and v the next thing is i need to now get the count how many times does c appear how many times does v appear now if you're on the grid i could use something like a count if you know you just say count if in this range you know how many times do you have c in there and it gives me the answer this works you know when you're on the grid because the count if is looking for a range but when you're using it in a formula context you're not really giving it a range you'll be giving it an array and it most likely won't work so you need to think of you know a different approach the other way you can do it is simply to test how many you know of these cells here equal you know c so you will see truths you will see false the number of truths you have there is the number of times c appears that's the easiest one i'm just going to make this absolute because i know i'm going to take this down All right okay so you can see false 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 but everywhere is a c it's a true okay good so now that we have this we basically can just say okay how do we convert these truths to numbers you can just use your double unary the minus minus okay so what's going to happen is that it's going to convert all those true and false to one and zero and then by the time it does the sum it gives you six for this and it gives you nine here okay so you're almost there the next thing is just to create the exact you know um, output that we are looking for what you see here is that between the columns here c and six you know you need a colon then between the rows you need a comma space it's amazing to note that the text join can do this in one fell swoop so let me show you how to do that so you can use text join most people don't do this but with the delimiter you can actually feed it you know with an array rather than just 
one delimiter. So to do that, you open curly braces, okay? And the first thing I'll put there is the colon, the column delimiter, and then I will put the comma space as the row delimiter. And then I can say, yeah, true, this is not really important, and then I select everything here, right? Okay, and that gives me what I want. So this is the exact approach I'm going to follow, but I'm going to do it, you know, in a formula context in one cell. Then we'll make it spill afterwards. All right, so let's kind of start it up, you know, the same way. <laughs> Someone's like, Victor, why did you delete everything? Well, I'm taking it as if I'm starting all over again. Us is always amazed when I do that. Like, why would you do that? Okay, so this is everything, right? We have it now, you know, spilled into different cells. We know that we are going to perform a few operations on this, so it will be important to make this a variable. So you could just say here at this point, let A, you know, be that. So everything you see right here is A. Now, what's the next thing we are supposed to output? If you remember, next thing is to actually get a unique, you know, of A, which is like looking at all the characters in A and getting a unique list of that. So just do unique of A. Let's see what that results to. You can see your V and C good. Now, at this point, you can sort it, right? So if you sort it, it will become C and V, right? Good. So now we have that. So the next thing is we want to know within, you know, this sorted, you know, unique array that we have here, C and V, we want to know how many times each of those characters, you know, occur, you know, in this A that we had initially. So let me do this. Let's take this down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a map function because map function allows me to perform, you know, operations on every element of an array. So in this case, this my array here is just C and V. So I want to perform a certain operation on C and on V, which is really to count how many times C occurs, how many times V occurs. So I can use a map function here. Okay. So I'll say map function. All right. So that's the array which is basically just C and V. Then I pull up a lambda and I can put a variable X. And now the question is, what do I do with X? Don't forget, I was comparing, you know, this here spews and gives me, you know, all the characters one after the other, like you can see all of them here. So I want to compare this basically with my X and say, oh, I did the same, right? Which is what you need to do. So it's like, what I want to compare is I want to compare A, which is all those characters with X. X here you know would represent each element of this array so the first time you know it goes through the loop x will represent c you know c character c and the next time it will represent v so now a equals to x this will give you a bunch of true and false and don't forget what we did there we did a sum you know use a double unary to convert the true and false to one and zero so let's just do this and see what the result is so that closes the lambda that closes the map and that closes the let okay so you can see that we have the six and the nine so using the same philosophy that we had when it's built to the grid okay so now that we have that we need to have you know c six you know and v nine so we can bring that in don't forget that your x here represents the character so your x here is your what is your c so you could do you know like a concatenation here right you could do something like x and you know that between x which is the character and the count what you have in there is a colon look at this so let's do this okay i'm not going to change anything so you can see that we have our c colon six and v colon nine so once we have this we basically you know have you know what we want right the only thing we need to do with this is to concatenate both of them using a comma space as the limiter. I have shown this in previous videos that if a comma space is your delimiter, rather than using text join, you could just use array to text because array to text automatically has a comma space as its default, you know, and it's just going to give you what you want. So what I'm going to do is that this entire result is what you can see here, right? That's what you're seeing. So I'm just going to put an array to text over it and just say array to text you know, of everything you can see, which is concatenate everything you see element by element based on, you know, a comma space delimiter. So that gives us that. Let's take this down. Okay. Let's just test if, you know, we have the right answers. Okay. So we are good. There's just one more thing to do. I have this formula in one cell and I had to drag it down, but now 
I want to make my formula spill. <laughs> so basically, it's simple. It's just saying that this operation you have performed on only A2. I want to perform it on A2 all the way to A10. Okay, so I'm going to use either a map function or a by row function, you know, and say map. Take everybody in here. All right. Let's pull up a lambda. Let's give another variable and call that variable P. So what this means here is this. You are going to iterate through A2 to A10, which is each of these cells here. And at every point in time, you know, the variable P will represent, first of all, A2, the next time A3, A4, and so on. So what it means is that the way you've written your formula where you have A2 here, A2 doesn't make any sense anymore. You're going to use P because P will represent A2 the first time in the loop. And then the next time you need to be a3 and so on so basically to fix this just change this a2s to p okay so change this to p right and then you need a bracket here you know closes the lambda you need one to close the map right and then you have everything spill so that's the first you know method hmm, didn't know it was going to take this long but well i always like to explain it well so let's go into the second one i don't want to push it to a different video so i'm going to do it here so the second one let's see i thought i had the data already okay so i'm just going to duplicate this so just hold on here and so we're just going to delete this and then we go the second way so it's going to start up in the same way but we are going to approach it differently so maybe just to save some time let me take this portion here let me just take this portion mm -hmm. but this time i'm going to use i'm going to point it to let's let's still point it to a2 first of all so let's do a2 a2 okay so just the same expression all right okay so the same thing we had before but now we are trying to get you know a unique list and at the same time get a count you know if you are doing this in excel there are a few ways you can get a unique list and a count at the same time which you know a pivot table you know can get for us but now that we have functions like group by and pivot by we can use the same you know concepts in a formula context so what this means is this i can come here and for my calculation i will do a group by and I'm saying, you know, group this output you are seeing here, which is obviously called A. Now, when you do a group by, like if you pull this into a pivot table, what's going to happen? It's going to strip out all the duplicates and give you just a unique list. The beautiful thing about group by is that it also sorts it. Okay. So group by A and then the values field. Values is whatever you're going to be performing, you know, your function calculations on. Well, the good thing is that in this, we only have one column anyway, so it's still going to be A. Now, the next thing is, what function are we going to do? What calculation are we going to do? I want to do a count and say, okay, fine, for each of the alphabets that we have in here, how many times do they occur? Now, if you use a count, you're not going to get the answer you want. Why? Because count only counts numbers. So you need to be using what? A count A. So what it means is that it would group and then do a count of the number of characters you know you have in there and see how many times does this character occur so let's do a count a here let's see the output and we'll modify as we go on okay so see what we have so now it gives us a summary straight up to say c is 6 v is 9 total is 15. we don't want the total so we we'll go back into the group by you know i will make a little adjustment headers i can say no i don't need that totals zero okay so now this basically gives me what i want c6 and v9 so now that i have this i would just adopt the text join logic that i used the first time you know to get this done what would i do i would do a text join and then i'm going to open you know curly braces first thing is to put a colon that's the first one and then a comma space close that i could say yeah this doesn't really matter to me good and then let's close one more bracket Okay, and we have that. So once we have this, you take this down, you know you're fine. But we need to extend this just the way we did in the previous one. So here we can just use a map function. You could also use by row, but you just take a map function, basically select this whole thing. Okay, use a lambda. We can use the same variable we used the other time, p. And p will represent, you know, each of these cells one after the other. So here, you know, you're just going to change this to a p. This is definitely much shorter. You know at least to me <laughs> okay so we close then we close the map 
and we have that let's just be sure that we have everything right okay good and that's how you get it done with the group buy that was much shorter so if you have group buy you know um it's really handy in this case it can do some things that the pivot can do naturally so i really really like it so those are the two approaches i wanted to show in this video if you like this video please hit the like button and please do subscribe it's good to like it's also good to subscribe subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out